Mom, I'm home. Oh, hi, Bonnie. How was school? It was awful. I'm so tired of everyone thinking girls are weak. What do you mean, honey? Well, in PE we had to do this strength test, and the boys had to do push-ups and sit-ups, but the girls had to sit in a circle and talk about learning how to flex our self-love muscle? What does that even mean? Well, I'm sure they're just trying to help you learn to accept yourself. Well, I can accept myself and be strong. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn how to get ripped. Okay, dear, you have fun. Emily from Bite Size Vegan and welcome to another vegan nugget. You may love him, you may hate him, and if you're at this very moment furiously composing a comment containing the word bacon, you're most likely of the latter camp. But chances are you know of him. Richard aka Vegan Gains is one of the fastest growing and most polarizing vegan channels on YouTube. While his characters are larger than life, and for many viewers the line between his fantasy and reality is sometimes difficult to distinguish, Richard's core fitness and nutrition advice is rather grounded and, surprisingly, well, unremarkable. Which seems to be his point after all. That is, cutting through all of the BS distractions and hawking of products to the basics of health. While his delivery purposefully matches the sensationalism, gimmicks, and insanity within the fitness industry, his actual practice and recommendations are strangely sane, which creates a fascinating dichotomy whereby one can be simultaneously offended and educated, left with a feeling of oral and ocular violation with a lingering hint of personal enrichment. So when I had the chance to speak with Richard back in June, I asked him to share his own personal approach to diet and exercise. If you missed my first interview with him, wherein we discussed his viral hit series, Worst of the Fitness Industry, that will be linked in the sidebar and below. I hope you enjoy hearing from Richard. So for someone who eats a high-carb diet and has the muscle mass that you do, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, and I know you've done some videos on this, but everyone always loves hearing what vegans eat. So could you tell us a, a typical day of what you eat, and um, you can kind of say even like what you eat pre- and post-workouts within that? It's pretty mixed between fruits and uh, starches, so I don't have like a super, super heavy fruit diet. It's not a super starchy diet, like, you know, starch solution. So like breakfast, oatmeal, maybe some toast, bread. Uh, really like bananas and apples a lot. Do eat a lot of blueberries as well. Uh, some cherries, and um, I guess throughout the day, I also have sweet potatoes. I really like sweet potatoes, especially Jamaican sweet potatoes. Later at night, I usually have like beans, and I make a really big soup with uh, yams, more sweet potatoes, and throughout the day, I also have like a lot of green smoothies. Like the green smoothies seem to really help as well, like especially pre and post workout, especially with cardiovascular training. Like that seems to really boost my cardio, having lots and lots of greens. I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna learn how to get ripped. Up the whole way. And when you're up, you're gonna squeeze those butt cheeks together. I mean, squeeze. If you don't squeeze, you're not gonna get that round, lifted booty that you want. That gets you ripped. Every single day, I'm eating tons and tons of fat. Breasts, breasts, and more breasts, because breasts are good for you. Number one nutrition aspect joining Club Shredded beef, chicken. Protein is essential in building muscle. Whole eggs. I like to have at least four every morning. You know, it's like, let's say you're married to a blonde and you just want to experiment with a redhead. The carpet matches the drapes. That's a necessity. This is needed. We're going to start out by making the waffle taco shell. We make this paleo by using almond flour instead of regular wheat flour. You uh, mix that baby up until it becomes a nice, thick, consistency beauty and guess what we're making your eggs in the waffle maker too <laughs> and you go ahead add anywhere between two to four strips of turkey bacon or whatever you want inside and then you have your amazing waffle taco look at that sexy do you try to stick to any particular you know macro ratios which is what everyone always gets so so into like, I don't track macros super tightly. Like, I don't track macros at all, really. Like, if you ask me how many grams of carbs or protein I eat per day, I 
really have no idea. Um, what I really do focus on is calories. Uh, calories are the most important thing. And um, you can see guys like Robert Oberst, who are strong men who eat meat, the reason they eat tons of meat is because it's just so calorie dense and it's easy to get in the calories when you eat candy or meat and that's why these people are eating these foods. So that's why I eat a lot of starches. It's just easier to get calories in. Oats are probably the easiest thing for me to eat a lot of just to get in those calories uh, and a bit of rice. Uh, beans are pretty easy too and the sweet potatoes, they're not bad either. And uh, the fruits, you know, it's just good to have fruit in your diet. You know, they don't like fill your stomach kind of as much for as long. So I like having that in, but just caloric content, you really do need the starches, especially if you're super active like me, like, you know, I cycle 70, 80 kilometers every other day. So this doesn't really feel effective. So speaking of your, your training, can you kind of Tell us what a typical, what what you try to do. You can even say on a on a weekly basis or a by session basis. Okay, like it's um, a three day split for weight training, and it's just full body workouts. Uh, focus on big heavy compound lifts, uh, squat. Well, I can't really squat right now because I have that injury that I had from the car accident, but still do hack presses, stuff like that, leg press. And uh, deadlifts are fine. Um, do bench press, you know, shoulder press, uh, rows. Those are my main lifts. And um, then I just have some accessory movements like, you know, bicep curls and triceps. Just, you know, keep my arms looking good. But that's basically my weightlifting routine. Pretty simple, very power lifter kind of training. And then cardiovascular training. I was doing 50 kilometers a day on my bike every day, but now just because I want more free time, I'm doing 70, 80 kilometers every other day. Waffle taco. The carpet matches the drapes. Sex, hey. Breasts, breasts, and more breasts, because breasts are so good for you. Great top tips for building muscle on a vegan diet and just promoting health in general. Eat your vegetables. Seriously, eat your vegetables. Nobody's eating their vegetables, even vegans. So eat your and green vegetables. Honestly, green vegetables are a great source of protein. They're very high in antioxidants. They're alkalizing to your body, and most Mom, importantly, they're extremely. I think I found the answer. What do you mean, honey? Well, I've been doing everything they're telling me. I've got I've got tubs of supplements. I'm packing in the protein. I'm doing the the butt thrusts, but I have absolutely no energy, and I keep going into meat comas. But this guy here, he says to eat vegetables and, and whole foods and lift weights. That might be crazy enough to work. Well, that's great, dear. A lot of people advocate, you know, changing up your routine after a month or so. Do you do you do that? Do you kind of cycle through things or do you just basically stay consistent year round? I have switched my main lifts around a bit. Like I was doing flat bench a lot and then I, I moved to like dips. And right now I'm doing uh, flat dumbbell presses as my main primary mover. So I switch th some things around like that if things aren't going too well. But, you know, generally if you're making progress, what's the problem? Like why would you have to really switch up your routine? It's better to just keep things consistent. And if you see any holes in your training or, you know, if you're not really liking some main lifts, then that's a good idea to change. But otherwise there's really no need to do those kind of things. Hi, Bonnie. How was school today? It was great. I insisted on doing the boys' fitness test, and I kicked their butts. Good for you, dear. Yeah! Are... Are you okay? It's a freeze frame for the video, Mom. God. I hope you enjoyed hearing Richard's personal approach to his health and fitness, and that you're not disappointed at the lack of supplements and exercise DVDs to buy. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what he shared or your own approach to diet and exercise in the comments below. And this being a video featuring vegan gains, I'm sure I'll hear other things as well. 
If you haven't already, be sure to head over and subscribe to Richard's channel for fitness industry exposés, more nutrition and fitness advice, and some serious dedication to ongoing character arcs. Please be aware that his channel does involve ample, uncensored language and potentially disturbing subject matter. You have been warned. If you enjoyed this look into getting some vegan gains, give the video a big thumbs up and share it around to show the uncomplicated side of fitness and nutrition. If you're new here, do hit that big red subscribe button down there for more awesome vegan content every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays, and not to miss out on the rest of the Vegan Athlete series. If you want to help support Bite Size Vegan, check out either the support links in the video description below, or click the Nugget Army icon there or the link in the sidebar. Now go live vegan, make some vegan gains, and I'll see you soon. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.